I mean, my uh, career playing against the Red Sox has been amazing. They're, they support their fans. I mean, they support their players. Uh, I know the four franchises in this area have been very good, especially in my life. And um, so they, they expect winning in, this, in the New England area, which is understandable. And they're very competitive as a fan base, which is completely understandable also. But in just things like this, they just don't uh, they don't have a place in the game. I mean, I thought we've we moved past that a long time ago, but obviously with what's going on in the, you know in the real world, things like this, people are out people are uh, outraged and speaking up at an alarming rate, and it's unfortunate that uh, I had to be involved with it. How Dad, what happened with the bag of peanuts? Um, coming off the field, um, I generally try and throw a ball. You know, to not necessarily the people that are you know sitting right by the dugout, but people sitting a little bit further. And I threw a ball, and I just put my glove down, and I see a bag of peanuts fly right in front of me. Um, it hit the cop, so he was really frustrated. So he turned around, and you know, immediately we tried to catch or see whoever did it. And you know um, we were able to to see who the guy was. He was escorted at the stadium. Um, I don't know the extent of anything past that, but the thing with throwing things onto the field is really unfortunate because you know. Our backs are turned. We don't know what you have. We don't know what you're throwing. We, we don't know the intent. You know, now, if you caught my attention and you said, hey, I got something for you, and you tossed me the bag, that's completely different. But uh, for you just to throw something at, in my direction, it's, it's first of all, it's dangerous. You know, what if it hits, hits me in my eye? What if it does something to make me hurt myself? And you know, this is my means of, of, uh, of finances. It's playing baseball. So what if things like that happen? Do I just go to him and say, can you? You know, you're going to pay for my insurance. You're going to fulfill the rest of my contract. Or do I, is it a bigger issue? Do I talk to the, the Red Sox? If I'm saying it, if hypothetically, if things like that happen. But um, you, you just don't do that. You know, I, I get where, you know, berate us, cuss us out, uh, tell us we suck, tell us, uh, you know, if we ground it out, ha-ha, whatever. Um, performance-based. Leave it to performance-based um, comments, talking about family members, Talking about uh, wife's kids, uh, racially motivated things. That's just not part of what's going on in this game. But the I peanut thrower did not use a racial epithet. Not from my knowledge. No, that was but, separate. But throwing something that that speaks a little bit that speaks a little bit higher. Adam, 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 Adam you were seen on television. From the Sox and from MLB, and you talked about fines yesterday. What happens now? What would you like to see done now? Well, I mean, fines, that's that's not in my realm. Obviously, I'm worried about playing the game. That's something that uh, I think it would be individually assessed in certain ballparks, certain rules and regulations. Um, I know that I met with Mr. Henry today, and he said that, you know, they're in the process of if things like this happen, they're going to revoke the person's, whoever tickets they are, because I know that tickets here are very sacred and generally passed down to generations, so it's hard to get. Um, so stripping people of, of their right to come to the ballpark, and that, that would suck because this is one of the greatest venues to watch a sporting event, and people would miss out on it because of, uh, of some just pure stupidity. Adam, uh, how, often, how often have you been called the N-word here and elsewhere? Um, that's a good question. I, I don't know how much, how many, how many fingers I have, their toes, to, uh, to keep count, but you hear it, and it's, it's just unfortunate that you would, you know, someone would resort to try and uh, you know, bring you down like that and dumb you down by calling you such a name that's just nasty. And, you know, I, my biggest thing is I just let people be who they are. Um, reality of it is most won't call you to your face. You know, it's easy to say it through social media or when you're in the stands. It's just, like I said, it's just unfortunate. And if, I forgot to answer your question, to uh, go on your question. I think it was tremendous how the Red Sox, how MLB, how um, – they got on, they got ahead of it as soon as possible. As soon as they heard about it, I'm sure our PR, Kristen, I'm sure her phone's been blowing up. I know Mr. Angelos is, is uh, well notified of it. Um, my phone's been blowing up all morning, and I'm sure you guys have uh, have all gotten the same things from friends, family, loved ones, and um, Adam, it's just unfortunate. Adam, did you, did you Red Sox players? Did any Red Sox players reach out to you? Um, I seen Mookie Betts. He tweeted at me. Um, Price texted me this morning. And uh, it's 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 that's it's pretty awesome that they see it. They it's bigger than the game, you know. These kind of things are bigger than the game. We're out here. This is a game. It's this isn't life or death. There's bigger issues in the world than a baseball game. This is purely entertainment. And Ed? David Price said last year he went through the same thing. He mm -hmm. talked to the. Global that's I've seen that. You know, he was struggling in the playoffs. Playoffs is hard to 
to do well in. And um, they just berated him and called him all kind of nasty things. It just makes, to me, makes no sense. And it just shows, you know, part of it's uh, individual's upbringing. Part of it's, you know, you never know what's going on in their personal life. They could be personally frustrated that day. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I got my own issues. So, like I said, it's just completely unfortunate that these kind of things still happen. In, uh, Adam, in how much do you appreciate Mr. Henry talking to you? I appreciate it greatly. Like I said, for the, for Mr. Henry to take his time out um, to come and talk to me and Buck, to get ahead of it, to you know, implement more security, to just try and find a resolve to it. And the hardest thing is to find a resolve because it's a sporting event. It's 40,000 people here. It's hard to nitpick I and mean, to pick out few people who decide to be ignorant so I just like and appreciate what he even coming and talking to me face to face instead of you know calling me or via text he came face to face and just and um, express his, his uh, disgust and he apologized on behalf of the uh, of the whole city. How it was particularly how? frustrating in the sense that you're a star player on a contending team you're a quality human being you're a pillar in the community. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I know you, <laughs> and then just to have some ignorant people do whatever they do, it, it has to be particularly frustrating because of who you are as a person. Right. It, it, it's, it just sucks. I, you know, I heard a Bill Russell story today, and Bill Russell won 11 championships here, and the things that I heard that happened to him, based solely on his skin color, you know, it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's unfortunate, man. It, like, I, like I said, you think that you, you get away from that, especially being in sports, you, you know, you come across all walks of life. Um, you get to change, not just my life, but I get to change other people's lives and outlooks on life. But for something like this, it just shows that uh, people still live in their own world. They still have their own views, obviously. And uh, some people like to express hatred towards uh, towards another person and another another group. So, would you say you hear more of it in Boston than other cities, Adam? I'm not going to say nitpick and just say you know here's here's bad, but um, here's. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a long history of, of these kind of incidents in Boston. And, you know, I've spoke with various players of different eras, and a lot of the things that they've told me, I can't say. Well, Bill Russell was 50 years ago, but you're saying things haven't changed that much in Boston. <laughs> ask, uh, ask, I think uh, an important thing for everybody to do is go ask the African Americans of the last 50 years that played baseball in this city and ask them how they were treated. What does David Ortiz were. say? He's a buddy of yours, right? Oh, uh, yeah, I haven't spoke with him yet. So I'm. Adam, I mean, he's with, busy. He's with, over there doing sketcher commercials and all that uh, kind of uh, stuff. Uh, Adam, Adam, what would you like the reaction to be tonight? I don't care. Boo me. I mean, treat me as it's, it's Orioles, Red Sox. I don't want any special treatment. I don't need any special treatment. Treat me as normal. Just keep the racist stuff out of there. Boo me. Tell me I suck. Please. That's what I personally want because that's how the game is supposed to be. That's how the competitiveness is supposed to be. I don't want no love and no support. I don't need all that stuff. I just want the fans to be normal and um, enjoy themselves, be cheering on your team, but uh, be respectful of, of what you're, of where you're at. You know, you got little kids around you. That's the biggest thing is when you hear these kind of things, there's kids around. I got two little boys, you know, I don't want my kids here. And I got nieces and nephews that are 10 and 11. How do I explain things like this to them? So these are just, you know, I think just watch your surroundings and as, as Red Sox fans, enjoy the game, um, cheer on your team, boo the Orioles, please, and you know, enjoy yourself, have a couple well, pops. Adam, Adam, did the conversation continue, Adam, or does this, in your eyes, put it to rest? Well, nothing's at rest when it comes to race. That's, let's be honest with ourselves. It's been going on for a long, long time, way before I've been in baseball, way before I was alive. So um, it's, it's all about having a conversation. Once you have the dialogue, that means you can, you can work towards a resolve. And, I think with the dialogue, we can we can work towards something. And like I said, this ain't the only place that that is like that. You seen last year in the wild card game, uh, Kim got a whole can of beer thrown at him. Now just imagine if that hit him in the head, whole can of beer thrown, being thrown from you know, 60 feet away, you know, 20 feet in the air. I'm not a, a physics major, but I know velocity was coming hot. And just imagine if that hit him in his head. He can't play baseball the rest of his life, or he gets a brain hemorrhage, or you know, what am I, what, what do you do then? Just kick the guy out? Oh. I think people need to be held to a higher accountability factor. And you can't come to a, a major league game, a football game, a basketball game, any game, and try and hurt the player. You spent your hard-earned money to go watch the entertainment. Now, like I said, boo. Uh, boo the player. That's, that's well in your right. That's part of it. We, we don't mind that. But never try and, and make it uh, more than what it is, you know? What, what, inning, what, what inning did you hear the N-word? <laughs> 
Was it more than one inning? What? I, w I wish you guys just 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 wear my shoes for 24 hours. They're comfortable. You don't recall you, uh, you don't recall what inning or um, exact innings, exact times? No. I mean, I, like I said, my focus is on the game, and when I hear things, I just like okay. Obviously, I just you know, I meet mentally. While I'm going on their game, I might be frustrated, but I got bigger things to worry about. I got a baseball game to win and a pitcher to uh, to defend. So to pinpoint exactly the, the time it happened, I'm not proud of it. At one point, you made a great play, and you were pointing back at the stands. Was that directed? That wasn't at the stands. I, I think that needs to be definitely clarified. That was pointing at uh, Wayne Kirby, our first base coach, who said that he would have had that ball in his back pocket. <laughs> Adam, what do you expect? He thinks that he can go out there and just do it. What do you, Adam, do you, do you expect to happen tonight? Are you refer to Mookie Betts, the tweet. He's encouraging fans to stand up and support you. What do you expect? I expect to be booed. I expect the fans to tell me I sucked as as normal. And, and, but just keep the ignorant comments. Keep that to yourself. Adam, do are you, you get the responsibility of other fans who hear this, see it, to point out the, the people that are doing that? I kind of do. Um, but I understand when people, you know, if people don't want to get involved with situations. You know, it, it's like we're guilty with association in, in, in terms of sense. You know, if I was at a game and I heard somebody just cussing out a player, I would 100% get up and lay, man. What, what are you doing? You know, there's kids here. This, this guy's a role model. He's out there doing something. He's working. What do you work at? Let me go to your job and disrupt you the entire time. Um, but, no, that's what it is. You, 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 mentioned, you mentioned walking through your shoes. And, you know, obviously this has happened before, as you said. Why did you feel important? Why, why was it important for you to come out now? Speak less. Uh, I think there's, there's always timing, you know. I'm, I try to make sure that uh, I just don't flood everybody with with everything that goes on, because every single day there's always something going on. But uh, it was just the right time. It was, it was something that was on my mind. It was frustrating for me. I'm a, I'm a grown man with, with, with family to uh, to raise, so I'm not just going to let nobody just sit there and berate me. I'm a grown man. and said, where I come from, you say things like that, we you put on them gloves and you go after it. So. Obviously, in the real world, you can't do that, especially in my field. So I just hopefully that uh, hopefully it all just the awareness comes. Uh, people around will people around in the stands will you know hold hold people hold other fans accountable. Um, and like I said again, the Red Sox and other stadiums, I'm sure, are going to beef up security and, and try and you know get the ushers to facilitate a little bit better when they when they see some patrons that are a little bit too drunk. Adam, there were a number of fans in the stands last <laughs> night that called into radio stations and said they saw your exchanges with people and that they didn't hear any racial epithets. <laughs> Season I would guess end. we have to take them at their word and they seem sincere. Are they wrong? No, I've said that there's been, I've gotten so much support from the Red Sox fans through social medias, you know, this is not how we act. And that's completely understandable. Like I said, to, to sweep, I mean, to throw the entire fan base of the Red Sox under the bus is completely, it, it just, it's just dumb on my behalf. Um, but there were a few people that decided to, they wanted to have their 15 seconds of fame, they wanted to get my attention, stick their chest out, and be bold. Well, like I said, where I'm from, there's a different way to handle that. You so know they absolutely screaming. said racial I heard what I, I heard. I heard what I heard, and my ears are my ears. Like I said, walk in my shoes, you'll understand it. And for people to defend other people and, and acts like this, it just shows that there's the bigger problem. So, All right. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for your time, man. Thank you very much. Good job.